All right, everybody, happy Father's Day on this nice 2021. We are on stage two of the Duramax filtration system. Just wanted to show you that I did finish up the Sinister Diesel coolant filter that I was doing last time. I ended up switching this port over to that side. Everything seems to be working just fine. Came over here, tapped into the coolant tank, and then we're down on the bottom of the EGR cooler, which you probably can't see because we had to remove the intake to get to that. Now I do have a little bit of a lost coolant, and I found out what happened is I got a slight itty bitty leak coming from uh, the bottom side of this uh, valve. And that's because I had to take the valve out from this side and put it on that side and probably screwed up all the sealant. So I'm going to have to take this out, put some thread lock on there and put her back in. Uh, I've been running this for two weeks and you can see the coolant tanks only gone down that much. I can smell the coolant and uh, you can see it dripping on top of the power steering fluid. So simple fix, simple fix, simple fix. Uh, as far as the uh, takeaways on the Sinister Diesel coolant, um, hey, it's been on there for a hundred miles. I Don't know what it's doing. I got another 400 before I take that filter off and cut it off. Do I feel warm and fuzzy about it? Sure do But today we are moving on to the uh, AMSOIL BMK 32 and it's a single remote bypass system and what that means is you retain your regular oil filter in its uh, original factory location and then you run this secondary kit to a remote location and this will take about 10% of the oil as you drive that boils down to about five gallons of oil every 10 minutes I think it is don't quote me on that but what the bottom line is is that by the end of the day if you drive in this system has filtered all the oil in your oil pan and it has taken it down to two microns. They claim it takes the soot out, it takes moisture out. Basically really, really, really clean oil and the other oil filter is doing its job. Now, the reason why we went with a single bypass rather than the dual kit that they also sell, let me see if I still have one. So this here is a dual bypass system. This goes where the oil filter used to be and it takes all the oil into this metering block and then you put two filters on here. You're going to have your factory full flow filter and then your bypass filter actually. This I believe is your factory fuel bleh, factory oil filter full flow and this is the bypass and then it exits the oil back into the um, uh, oil fill location. Let's give you a little better view of that. So the oil comes in, it's going to hit this one, filter, go back up to this one, and this one's going to take a little bit out, and then most of it's going to go back to your system. Here's the problem with this kit. It works great 99% of the time, but they've discovered over the years of running these kits on the diesels that when there's a cold weather start and the oil is thicker than it normally is, there is flow issues to where you can have no oil pressure for set amount of time. That's really not good. So Amsoil does not recommend a dual bypass system on these diesels. What they do recommend is to retain your factory oil filter which once you start the truck will continue the oil flowing as normal and then this is what's going to go where the oil filter is and this is going to attach to the block then the oil filter is going to attach to here and there let me open this thing up so basically what you got is you take your oil filter off lube that ring up put that where the oil filter was this is going to thread onto your existing oil filter stub and you're going to torque that down, I believe 40 foot-pounds, and then you're going to put your oil filter on here. And that's just going to give you a spacer. Now in this spacer is a port. And that port is going to get 
one of these 90 degree fittings sort of like this and that's going to siphon out oil into the inlet which is right here and then it's going to push it out to the outlet and that's only going to take a percentage of the oil so you're not going to affect the normal drivability of the oil that is coming out of your oil filter and you won't have any low pressure oil systems so I've done a couple of these on my trucks I think this is my eighth one on my personal vehicle and I've installed lots of them yet when I had the shop uh, location 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 that is always the big pain in the butt and it is Amsoil's Achilles heel because they never really have designed a bracket or a set location like when you buy something like say you buy a uh, air dog uh, fuel filter like we did and it comes with a bracket and a place to put it so you got to find a place and it's been inside the frame outside the frame inside the engine compartment outside the engine compartment la -da -da. there's pros cons you can go on forever I've always installed them down below and then I get all these uh, armchair comments about how road debris road debris it's gonna do this uh, most of these things have hundreds of thousands of miles on these trucks because after I sold them the next customer is still running them never had a filter get hit by a rock uh, never had a tire delaminate and take my old filter out because uh, I don't let my tires get that bad I uh, put good quality Toyo tires on my truck and I change them when they get to be about down to 20 20 10 percent you know I don't push my luck so back to this um, I wanted to put it down here in the in the uh, the wheel well that we had there was a nice big area um, really didn't like the hose routing didn't like a lot of other things so we pondered on it for a couple weeks and then my buddy and I came up with uh, mounting a bracket that he built me right here and it's got a couple of T-nuts and we drilled right through the plastic. I did not perforate the back side of it. Use this for a holding down bolt, which holds your fr uh, frame pillar right here. There is a push pin here and then there's a push pin over there. I removed both of those and I'm going to drill through there and put um, bolts to hold it. Unfortunately, I don't have those bolts, so we're just going to move forward, and I'll catch up with that on a later date. So let's go ahead and mount the filter head. I've already went ahead and mounted my 90-degree fittings and my A and A fittings, A and N fittings in there, and we're going to mount that up on that wall right there. I'll show you how that looks. All right, so with the filter head mounted, that is the location that I've chosen. Gives me a lot of nice room to get down here. I wanted to run the 110 filter, but unfortunately it's just too big, so I had to go with the 90. This is an old 90, it's my demo. Uh, I just want to show you that it will go right in here, and she will thread on. I'm going to have to put the phone down for a second, give me a second here. I just had to get it started. So you'll spin your Amsoil bypass filter on there. And this is just for demonstrations, I'll actually hook all this up after I get the uh, video done. But you guys like to see this stuff. So there's my location. As you can see, the 110 would hit the uh, the turbo pipe. This has got plenty of room. Nothing going on there. And it's open all the way around. So that's that. So on the out, what we have is we have these A&N fittings here. Sorry. Again, trying to do this one-handedly is... So you would tighten that bad boy down. We're just going to finger tight it. Like I said, I'll do the actual install after the video. Return location is going to be right here. So you can take your factory oil fill cap off. And then you get the BMK1202, which is a locator that goes in here like that. And which way is this tighten? Tightens clockwise. So get it in there. Line up the little nub. Okay. Now, where do I want this to come through? So you got to figure out how you want your return line to go. I'm 
pretty much okay with that. All right, that's pretty much the way I want to run my line. It's not really an interfering with anything. It's all under the hood, and I might throw a zippy tie around the turbinator or turbo resonator delete kit just to hold it there. So I'm going to cut my hose right there. A pair of uh, nice cutters. Hang on. So get your hose cut to your desired length that you want. Ah. You know what? Take into consideration your fitting. Look at that. I cut it too long. I'm just going to place this up here for measurements. So I'm going to want my hose to... Yeah, you know, that'll work. I can work with that. Alright, to put these on, what you're going to do is you're going to thread this fitting onto this hose. Let me go do that now. Alright, so you thread that on counterclockwise. Ooh, that's nice and toasty. And I doubt you can see it, but the uh, hose is bottomed out right there on the inside of it. Now, Amsoil wants you to back that out one half a turn. So I'm going to use my 5 8 wrench on this and back this out half a turn. So I back that out half a turn. It's a little bit ways down. That is nice and warm. A little friction there. Then you take your other fitting and you get it all lubed up with oil and then you're going to put it inside there and crank it down and obviously I'm going to need two hands so let me do this here with two hands. Sorry guys. So I used my 9 16 wrench, got her all tightened up. You do want to bring it right down to the shoulder and then for demonstration purposes of course, well this one's actually good to go. Now this is a free spinning little guy right there yeah I like that that's that's the way I'm gonna leave that just because I'm anal I'm gonna throw a zip tie around that and hold it down so that is my return line from the filter down into the fill and you can take this off and put oil in there the neat part about this is is uh, I do oil analysis I and mean, what exactly is that so last time when I changed the oil which was a week ago I pulled this sample out of the drain pan as it was coming out of the truck kind of messy icky icky ooey gooey and all the kinds of yummy stuff so with this system all I got to do is unscrew this cap, start the truck, or have somebody start the truck, hold my little container, and there'll be a real fine pencil line of oil coming back into the uh, fill here. And I could put the bottle under there and catch all that, and then shut the truck off. Uh, not getting any oil on my hands, and it's just going to be a whole lot easier. It's a really nice way to get your oil samples. Why do I do an oil sample? You send it off to the lab, it's going to tell you everything that's going on in your motor. You know, do you have aluminum, brass, copper, steel, you know, whatever type of fragments of metal in there. Do you have contamination? Do you have soot? Do you have fuel contamination? Do you have uh, poly uh, antifreeze contamination in there? Basically gives you a good analysis of your oil. It will tell you if your oil is good for continuous use or if you are recommended to drain it. And plus it just keeps a nice shop record of the vehicle if you ever decide to go sell it. Every time I go to sell to one of my vehicles, there's always a line of people that want to buy it because they know it's in absolutely unbelievable mechanical uh, condition. So, there you go. Now, that's on. I gotta tighten that. Tighten that one. I'm gonna fill the filter with oil to pre-charge it. And then this guy right here is gonna go on the inside of that bypass so coming there's your exit there's your exit from the bypass here's your intake this is going to go down to that filter housing adapter and as you can see Amazon gives you plenty of hose you never have a problem with hoses so all I need to do is take off my oil filter and I did get a new Amsoil oil filter even though it's pretty sad that I've only ran that filter for a week
Uh, mount this to the filter block location. Torque it down to, I believe, the 40 foot-pounds of torque. I gotta put my fitting in there. Run that hose down to where I want it, zip tie it to the frame, and then basically uh, start the truck. You know, put my oil filter back on. This will probably add about a quart, a quart and a half of oil to my system's capacity, which is good for me. And that's all I got to say. I don't know, maybe I was a little long-winded on this. I uh, hope you guys got the gist of it. I'm going to go ahead and just tighten all these fittings up. And there's no reason for you to watch me pull the oil filter off and mount this to the block. It's pretty self-explanatory. Hang on. I just knew somebody would put in the comments. I don't understand. So this would be threaded to the block through this. And that O-ring right there would be holding it against the block. Sorry about my hands. You thread your new oil filter on, boom. There is your new oil filter on the housing and this would be the part where the bypass hose goes which is the actual exit of the oil going to the bypass system. And then it's going to enter up there, go through the filter, come out there and go back down into the fuel, fuel <laughs> oil fill cap. So there is my Sinister Diesel coolant filter. Small leak, no big deal, I'll fix it this week. This is my bypass Amsoil oil filter, uh, BMK32. Hopefully no leaks. And then the next uh, job we're going to tackle is gonna be the Air Dog uh, Gen 2 4G 100. So, so far she's uh, looking good on her filtration. And uh, I'm going to be doing all, I got uh, that oil sample that I'm going to do that I just pulled the oil out last week and it has 10,000 miles on it, non-bypassed. And then I'm going to run this 10,000 miles and I'm going to pull an oil sample and send it off uh, being bypassed. And the neat part about it is, is uh, we're going to really see a difference hopefully on how clean the oil is. I've watched videos from Amsoil where they've taken their bypass system and bought store-bought oil so they actually went to the shelf and bought a certain synthetic brand oil that is just as good if not better in their mind as AMS oil and they took a oil uh, analysis from it being brand new never been opened and then they run it through the bypass system and it actually came out cleaner than it was in the factory container which I thought was hilarious so and that was a top end uh, $12 quart oil uh, not going to throw no names out there. There's no reason, but, you know, they are number one. Um, so we're moving on. I'm going to go ahead and put that together, and I'm going to upload this for you guys. And next week will be the air dog. And then hopefully I'll have that coolant leak solved. It's just a stupid little, I mean, I driven this thing for a week and a hundred miles and I've just lost that little bit of water and I can smell it so no big deal easy fix it happens thanks for watching guys and uh, give me a thumbs up thank you